Welcome back to the third and final segment on neurodevelopment. In the previous sections, we talked about the cellular formation of the brain and, and how the different neurons uh, make connections and, and find their respective places in the brain. And, and now we'll talk a little bit more about the, the gross development of the brain and how its maturation corresponds with developing functions. The first thing that you might notice about the structure of the brain is that it is comprised of several folds. Uh, it gives the brain kind of a bumpy appearance. And uh, our understanding is that increased cortical folding is associated with higher cognitive function. And, and to illustrate this, we, we consider first the comparison between the human brain and the, the macaque brain. Uh, we know that the, the human thickness of the cortex is about twice as thick as that of the macaque brain. However, in terms of folding patterns in the brain, the human's brain is about 10 times more folded than that of the macaque brain. Again, um, suggesting that increased cortical folding may be associated with higher cognitive function. However, having said that, uh, we do know that uh, healthy adolescents tend to show a decrease in cortical folding with age. So it, it appears that there's a, a period of um, increased folding as the, the child matures to a point where uh, starting in uh, adolescence, there's uh, more of a, a decline or decrease in those uh, folding patterns of the cortex. This figure here illustrates uh, the development of those folding patterns. So the, the three on top show um, prior to birth how that brain is developing in terms of its folding patterns. And then here we see at term, at birth, um, the folding of the brain. And then here on the, the bottom right, showing the adult patterns of, of folding. And you can see that there is quite a bit more folding in the adult brain as compared to the, um, the prenatal brain. We do know that the cortex uh, develops over the lifespan. Here on the left, you see a 3D reconstruction of the brain of an 11-year-old male. And you can compare and contrast that with uh, the, uh, the cortex of, the, of a 50-year-old male here on the right. You may notice that the 50-year-old male, um, in this figure, you're able to see the uh, more pronounced grooves between the, the gyri or, or the bumps and the gyri themselves don't look as full or plump as you see in the 11 year old male. And uh, this may sound alarming, but it is uh, uh, to, to some degree, it is expected that there is a decrease in cortical thickness and um, changes in the folding patterns over the lifespan. If those um, changes are uh, too pronounced, though, sometimes that is associated with uh, neurodegenerative uh, disorders. So we consider here the changes in volume over the lifespan. We'll consider gray matter and white matter volumes separately. So first of all, starting here on the left, um, so gray matter, again, this is, for example, the, the cortex of the brain and some of the subcortical nuclei also have a gray matter components. And so you can see that uh, early on after birth, there is a significant increase in the volume of this gray matter. And then it peaks and then starting about the time of puberty, there is a decline in that gray matter volume over time. Um, again, this is part of the normal development. Um, and it's thought that this corresponds with the pruning 
of connections that are not needed in the brain. And, and that has the effect of um, making the brain more efficient. Now here on the right, uh, the pattern of the white matter volume development is slightly different. There is an increase in white matter volume early on in life, but then um, it tends to plateau um, and remain more stable uh, even into later ages. Now the increase in uh, gray matter is, is thought to represent um, some of the increase of connections between uh, different neurons. And these synaptic connections start to form early on at about 56 days gestation. Those connections are already starting to form in the brain. And then the rate of the, the synaptic uh, formation peaks from about 34 weeks gestation, so right before birth, through about the first two years of life. So this is a time of very rapid um, development in the brain as the, the various neurons are forming connections with each other. And these connections form at an astonishing rate. Um, during peak periods of development, uh, it's estimated that those connections form at a rate as high as 40,000 synapses per second. Now, with all these synapses that are formed, uh, the brain, in a sense, kind of overshoots the, the number of synapses that are needed um, for adulthood. Uh, in fact, there are about 40% more synapses produced uh, compared with the final density uh, seen in adulthood. And so as a result, some of those synapses are pruned out um, again, to make the brain more efficient. In terms of maturation of the cortex, we see a typical developmental pattern, which progresses from caudal to rostral, or in other words, from back to front, from dorsal to ventral, which means from top to the bottom of the brain, and also from sensory regions to motor regions. Now we know that the sensory regions of the brain tend to be in the back part of the brain. So in the parietal, occipital lobes, uh, posterior temporal lobes are where those sensory cortices are located. Whereas a motor cortex is in the frontal lobes of the brain. So we'll illustrate this here. And uh, we have a few videos and um, in these videos, the, the reddish yellow regions are the least developed, and then the purple regions represent the, um, the greatest uh, maturation. And so we'll see in this video how um, you'll see the maturation start towards the back and move front. You'll see it start from the top and move down and, um, and progress in this matter. So back to front and top to down. We'll see that again. Now looking at the left hemisphere, starting back to front, filling in those regions, top to down. And then this is a, a dorsal view of the brain. So we're looking at the brain from the top and you can get a really good sense here of a somatosensory cortex, which is in the, the dark purple, showing that it is one of the earliest regions to develop. And we also see back here an occipital region near the um, primary vision cortex. And we'll see how this progresses looking from this dorsal view. Again, back to front, top to down, sensory, and then motor. And in this figure, we see the, a static view showing those changes over time, starting about the age of five through age 20. Again, some of those sensory regions first maturing and then later some of the motor uh, regions as well. And you may note that the frontal lobes 
are among the last to develop. And the frontal lobes are associated with uh, what we call executive functions. Um, those are the higher order thinking skills that an executive of a company might need, for example. So um, tends to be uh, skills such as organization, planning, decision-making, um, prioritizing of tasks and so forth. Now, uh, the cortex uh, develops in a characteristic fashion, uh, back to front, top to bottom, sensory, then motor. And there's also a characteristic pattern for myelination to occur. We know that myelination starts in utero prior to birth, but even at birth, myelination of the brain is far from complete. We do see this myelation starting at about the 16th week of gestation, uh, but it really starts to increase in week 24. And it also corresponds uh, very closely with developmental milestones. This progression, again, is predictable, and it also progresses from caudal to rostral, so back to front, dorsal to ventral, so top to down, sensory, and then motor. And so you can see that there's a very common pattern between cortical maturation of the brain and myelination of the brain. And this figure shows uh, imaging evidence of this myelination over time. So we have in this first column, a neonate, so a, a newborn brain. Uh, in the middle is a two-year-old brain. And then at the right, this shows an adult brain. And these are different types of uh, imaging sequences. Um, we will look uh, mostly here at the fractional anisotropy image, this DTI, um, uh, which is a DTI metric. And you can see that uh, just after birth, you can, you can see the start of the development of some of those um, white matter tracts. You see there the corpus callosum, for example, and the internal capsule. But two years later, those pathways are much more developed. They are thicker, they're better defined. And then by adulthood, those white matter tracts are um, uh, defined further still. And you can get a better sense of some of these uh, more peripheral tracts as well, which were not as apparent right after birth. And the, um, this shows uh, the, the corpus callosum in particular and how it develops. So the corpus callosum is a band of white matter fibers that connect the two hemispheres. Here we have that FA metric. And at four months um, in this uh, individual child, the FA was measured at 0.29. And you can see here, this is a fiber tractography uh, image that was created of this child's uh, corpus callosum showing an approximation of those white mat matter fibers in her brain. Now compare this at four months to the corpus callosum at 10 months. You can see that those um, fiber tracts are, are better defined, they're more filled out, and particularly in the frontal region. And the FA has now increased to 0.37. You can see her there waving hello. Um, by 14 months, she's now walking, um, and the FA has now increased to 0.39. You can see that corpus callosum is better defined, even uh, more full in terms of the, the fiber tracks there. By 30 months, walking confidently and independently, and the FA has increased further of this corpus callosum, which you see the tractography of there. And then uh, by about three years, the FA of the corpus callosum is 0.44, so it has increased yet further. And you see there a very well-defined uh, corpus callosum, which supports her, well, ability to ski at this age. 
This is just one uh, white matter structure, but hopefully you get a sense of how this develops over time and corresponds with a uh, skill development. We do know that the human brain develops more slowly than that of other species. Um, and it continues to develop uh, through at least halfway through the, the third decade of life. So until the late 20s, and there's evidence that it may continue to develop even beyond that. As I mentioned, the, prefer the prefrontal cortex is one of the last regions to develop. And um, as I mentioned, the frontal lobes are associated with uh, executive functioning and other cognitive functions, um, such as working memory, uh, inhibition of uh, inappropriate responses, following the rules for social behavior, and so forth. And uh, this development of the brain, the pattern of development corresponds with the different functions and, and the timing at which they develop. Uh, I've shown this figure previously that the sensory uh, functions are among the first to develop and then language skills uh, develop after that. And then the higher cognitive functions develop later still. Um, and so it's specifically in this figure, it's showing the development of the neural connections that underlie each of these different functions. So you need to have the connections in place for uh, sensory information to be processed appropriately, vision and hearing. And then you need to have the connections in place that will support language skills. And then later on, to have uh, those connections in place to support the higher cognitive functions. And this is another figure that you saw earlier, um, giving a better appreciation of the different functions that a child must master early in life and the timing for the sensitive periods for the development of those skills. Um, we know that uh, development proceeds uh, when the brain makes those appropriate connections and uh, and shows the um, the expected maturation of the cortex and myelination. But there also needs to be um, opportunities for the brain to develop and for those skills to progress, and so. The, ch the child does also rely on those opportunities from the environment for those skills to develop. Um, and that concludes uh, this segment on neurodevelopment. We have here some of the, the sources from this segment. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>